Hello, Dawn. Hi, how are you? Awesome. I'm so glad that you came back. It's wonderful to be back. I'm just incredibly honored. Thank you. Uh, so you're, awesome. You're incredible. Thank you, my dear. I'm so grateful. You um, you were on an earlier episode way in the, in the sort of the beginning months of COVID when we talked a little bit about what life is like dating during COVID. And that was a very entertaining that conversation. A conversation for sure. Yeah. And I thought we have to have another conversation because there's so much that you and I um, sort of, we believe in the same things. We have the similar philosophies on things. So I was really grateful that when I asked you to come back on, um, that you said yes. So if for, for those folks who haven't seen your um, other uh, interview, go and check it out because it was brutally honest about what life is like during COVID, but it also gave really important things to remember. So um, if you're struggling, please check it out. Um, so Dawn, so could you take a minute to just let people know who you are, remind them who you are, where you live and what you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Dawn Sacco Pascalides. Um, I am truly the empowerment for others, for my four children, for myself, my family, my friends, my partner. Um, I'm a retired, newly retired school principal. I'm currently a um, college professor. I also am an educational consultant for a few schools and I'm a coach. Um, I love supporting people in their dreams and their passions in life and helping them find their passions in life. Awesome. I love it. And you and I know each other through some leadership work that we did together. And I'm mm -hmm. grateful that I had the opportunity to meet you and go through that, that, that expansion journey together. I thought I feel the same. Incredibly yeah. grateful. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you go through something like that, you find connections with people. Yeah. So to, today we're going to talk about women elevating women. And I, I love this because, um, you know, when we were talking about what would this episode look like, we were talking about, you know, how do we sort of lean into uh, having women support other women? Uh, and then, you know, we came up with the title fearlessly shattering the glass ceiling, you know, because, you know, we're in this we're in this moment where we can actually start to, you know, get, get a little bit more uh, validation and presence and, and um, make a bigger impact. So I'm really excited. So we are talking about women empowerment. It's a very personal topic to you and I, but tell the audience why it's so important to you as a woman. You know, you and I both have spent so much time speaking to people and um, uh, many, many women, especially. Um, it's one of my passions. And what I found after speaking to so many women, no matter what age you are, no matter what, you know, what um, religion you are, wherever you live, and you know, we, we've talked to people near and far, I'm, I find these two common threads. Um, women, worry most about living without a purpose and like really not also living their life without having a sense of belonging. Mm. Yeah, everybody wants to have a purpose. Everybody wants to feel connection. And what I find is that women who actually face the, the heartbreaks, the despairs, um, really facing things head on with courage in their life, um, what I'm finding is that's where the the growing actually happens. You know, I mean, when, you know, heartbreak and grief or whatever is knocking at your door, you know, answer that, even though it may hurt, because that truly is where the, the growing is. Because out of grief, you know, it's almost like emerging from a cocoon, um, like to, to something anew. So I'm really committed to having conversations with women in my life that, you know, you are enough. You know, don't be afraid to, to lift that rug of your life and see what's underneath because we all have stuff underneath that rug. You know, breaking through the barriers, not stepping over things, like pretending it's not happening. Yeah. Um, you know, living that big life, not being afraid to, to fail, you know, really going big. And, you know, you mentioned a word last week or a couple of weeks ago to me, Virgo, um, yeah. and 
uh, you know, it's it's like the the woman, the warrior woman. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have to be, you know, the vice president of the United States to to, to be, you know, Virgo. You know, yeah. you and I I consider you that person, and I align myself with women who are that. So I enjoy, and it is one of my true passions to have conversations with women, to constantly be learning because the more I listen to them, the mm -hmm. more. I actually find that I'm learning about myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, we we also had this conversation. You and I both um, have lived through some stuff, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And we both found ourselves, when, when I reflect back to different a different time in my life about the people pleasing and, and sort of showing up in the world the way the world expects mm -hmm. you to show up and doing the things that they expect you to do to, to show up and be, you know, perceived as having it all together and and looking good, and we're, we get so caught up in uh, how you stack up to the woman next to you, uh, but it's all an illusion. Do you want to talk a little bit about what your experience has been around, sort of just having the reality check that like enough of trying to fit in and show up and fit a mold that maybe doesn't doesn't honor who you are. Yeah, you know, I mean, I was, for me, what shifted for me the most in my life is to basically abandon that thought or that how I was, how I saw women when I was a young girl, mm -hmm. um, we looked up to women or we were taught to look up to women or to grow up to be women who were Oh, isn't that wonderful? She's so she's so selfless. She's yeah. such a selfless person. Like she's so amazing. And I've actually learned to like abandon that thought because actually it's not a healthy thought. Mm -hmm. Um, because you really actually need to be selfish and fill yourself first with your needs um, before you can actually be of selfless. To other people. Yes. And I do believe I'm selfless as a mother, as a friend, as a partner, you know, as, you know, a daughter and, and all of that. And none of that is possible unless I, you know, am filling my needs first, right? So my goal is never to remain the same with the same ideals, same opinions. Um, however, always moving forward and growing as a person each day. And to do that, you, you can't be selfless. Mm -hmm. You actually have to like have your needs met. Mm -hmm. um, what I find is that when I don't hold on to an existing opinion or the way it should be um, and really open myself up to like whatever it looks like, just be there in the present, yeah. accept that, um, for all my, you know, good and bad and, and all the craziness in my life, just accept for whatever it is at that very moment. I find myself um, each every time I do that, I'm more brave. And the more brave I am, the more selfish I am, yeah. the luckier I actually am in my life. And the more selfless I can actually be for others. Because right. I do believe that by being in service to other, others, your life actually works yeah. however you must have that foundation of having your needs completely met first as as a human like all your holes have to be filled in yes in order for you to be whole and complete to be there for another human being and that includes your you know your own children your spouse your yeah. friends yeah yeah i think you know what's really interesting to me is that like you were saying before we came on the air, like look at where our mothers were, look at where they came from and look at where we are. And that's a really good grounding point to go, well, considering where they were and considering where we are, it's very different. But, you know, we talk a lot about um, be vulnerable, share your failures, share, share your mistakes with other women, have them see that it's okay to make a mistake. Yeah. But yet, you know, you and I were groomed to look good, to to not like 
don't yeah. don't don't share the family you know yeah. keep that keep that in the family you don't share yeah. that stuff it's yeah. you know it, it's just the way that we were raised so how do we how do we do that how do we be vulnerable share without worrying so much about the, the looking good well, I agree with you in that. We, we were raised that way, uh, you know, to walk around looking good, to avoid looking bad, never share the family secrets, right? And we were groomed at a very young age. Um, you know, what's that quote by like Maya Angelou? Like you do the best that you can till you know better, then you know better, you do better, something to yeah. the word, something like that. But, you know, for me, it's, what I have come to become in my, you know, 52 years on the planet is, and I change each each year and each day, but like really just show up in with everyone with like a deep humility almost, uh, you know, um, a humbleness that, you know, I'm doing the best I can at this very moment. Um, and that through my thousands and thousands of failures actually become my successes. I mean, if I would stopped at my failures. I never would have been able to, you know, get all my, you know, educational degrees. I never would have been able to, you know, be a principal, be a college professor, be a mom of four kids. I mean, it took me forever to get pregnant. If I had quit out of frustration, none of that would have been possible, you know, finding like a love of your life. Um, and so I always say, you know, I come back to the word courage again, but courage, like refusing to be afraid of the failure and embracing the failure. And only expectation I have is to actually just become myself mm -hmm. and have others become their self. And most important, Stop listening to the stories that you create in your head about yourself because that, you know, yeah. as you and I have called it and referred to it, you know, that itty bitty shitty committee, you know, it's, it's, that is, can really ruin you sometimes. So yeah. stop listening to those thoughts, you know, just yeah. it's in the failures, you'll find the success. That's where you're going to grow and expand as, you know, another human being. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, um, I had Carrie uh, Barrett on yesterday and we were talking about self-esteem and um, we were talking about like the importance of loving ourselves and what does it mean to really love ourselves. And I think, you know, when I think back to everyone always says to me, oh, you're so courageous to tell your story about being depressed and, you know, having a mother who was abusive and like, but like, I think that we as women need to realize what's at stake in sharing vulnerably and the and the pathway that gets created when there is an authentic sharing. You mm -hmm. know, but you got to love yourself first in order to do that. You can't be yeah. beating yourself up. So I think it, I think they all go sort of hand in hand, self-esteem, self-love, and then the courage to to be vulnerable and share creates an access for other women and in in just in being us, we can create a pathway for other women. That's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to talk about. Yes. And, and you know, it's interesting you say that about other people's opinions. You know, when I, when I talk to young teens, girls, you know, these, these 17, 18 year olds, you know, I, I, I see the constant worry about, well, what are they going to think? Or what are they going to think? And, you know, for me, um, you know, something I faced like at a difficult crossroad of my life, crossroad of my life, um, where other opinions matters. I was like holding it on like a thousand pounds in each hand. Yeah. Um, when I actually like put those pounds down and stop listening to um, the opinions of all the people of why they think my marriage ended. Oh, and what happened to make that marriage end? And because nobody knows what happens behind yeah. closed doors. And I myself and, you know, my ex-husband and my four children were unfortunately like anyone else going through some type of, you know, life change. Um, they, we were spoken about uh, by people, and people who we knew, people in our circle. And, you know, for me, someone once said to me, uh, you know, they said, Dawn, you know, 
the lioness doesn't care about the opinions of sheep. And, you know, I, I, I held that on and I, I said, I've mentioned that quote to many teenagers and young women and women who I speak to who are going through a very difficult time. And the truth is, it really is none of my business what anybody says about me. Yeah. So when I abandoned that of um, divorcing, not only my ex-husband, but divorcing those people around me who were not lifting me up and making me a better person. Yes, my circle got much smaller. However, everyone in my circle is of utmost top, top quality people only, who only want the best for me, are completely non-judgmental of me and love me unconditionally. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I say that really with who I work with, who I choose to spend my time with, you know, uh, and every year I get older, my my circle is just filled with only quality people. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yes. so you know, that, so is that sort of your moment where you just didn't give, you just didn't give a shit anymore? Like that you were just like, you know what, enough. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, you know. You, you have to be. And, you know, what I was finding was that I wasn't, I wasn't like a, I wasn't being my own best friend. That's what was happening, truly. Yeah. Um, and when I, I was worrying about everybody else and what they were saying and what they were thinking. And I really don't, I don't care anymore what anybody says or thinks. I really don't. I mean, I live my life in the light. I know I, you know, I have my heart open and um, for my friends, for my family, and, you know, all my loved ones. And I can be vulnerable all the time, mm -hmm. knowing that I'll never get hurt by any of them. So, mm -hmm. you know, but the, all that happens and that strength to be vulnerable, because it really takes a very strong person to be vulnerable. And yeah. it's a muscle you actually have to build and practice. Mm -hmm. It's one of my things I work on the most with myself. Right. Um, is to be vulnerable. And um, that all starts with like being a best friend. So, best tell me, so what does that mean? I mean, it sounds good, be your own best friend, but like, what does that really mean to be your own best friend? Well, you know, it's like, you know, when you're on the airplane, you know, when they say put the oxygen on yourself before you put your kids, like a mother's first instinct is to like just right away take care of the kids and put the oxygen on them. But the truth is, then you pass out and no one's there holding it up for them and no one wins. So yeah. you actually have to take care of yourself, you know, like um and embrace embrace it all, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm an incredibly imperfect person. Mm -hmm. Um and I've learned to be my best friend and embrace and love all my imperfections. And, you know, have a little cheer party for my, you know, my, my successes and a mm -hmm. pick me up pep for my failures. And, you know, it's almost like um, when, I, when I see women not being their best friend, it's very apparent. They're, they're the women who are, I, I look at it as almost like, um, like a snow globe. Mm -hmm. Like you, you know, you shake a snow globe, and I, when I look at them from afar, like I, that's how I see their life. It's just like in a total flurry, and they're so busy and they want things to just stay so busy and in a rush. And I used to live my life like that. Wow. I, I didn't want the snow to settle because yeah. it would actually make me have to look at like the reality of what's happening around. So, you know, it's in the facing of the truth that you're actually going to find your true happiness. And, you know, that requires you being your best friend. So um, just being good to yourself, whatever, yeah. that, whatever that looks like, there's no rule book. Yeah. yeah. You know, you yeah. write your rule book right. for your life. Yeah. And, you know, so I that, that's sort of what I mean by that, you know, by a best friend. I think a lot of us, and maybe things are different now in COVID, but I think a lot of women in general typically like are so busy and they're so overscheduled and they're so over 
um, their lives are so complicated that they don't slow down to look at that. Like you just said, like it, it's hard to take a second step back and really evaluate yeah. what's working, what's not working. It takes courage to do that, but it, a lot of people do and you can see it now that you've stepped away from that rhythm, you could see it in other people. Yeah. And, and have the courage to walk away, you know, from someone else. Yes. That was the other thing that I was going to say. It's about loving yourself so that you walk away. You, you actually, you, you wrote it to me. You said, have the courage and the confidence to walk away from the job, the man or the friendship where you are not being valued. Yeah. And a lot of women, you know, they have this, this discount sticker across them, you know, rip that mother off you, you know, really, if you have it on you, then, you know, the sign on your door says, everyone welcome, no matter how I'm treated. And what I've learned is you can still love someone, even though they're not directly in your life. Yeah. And if, you know, if you feel that, people are not seeing your self-worth that, um, you know, you, if people are not seeing your self-worth, you sticking around, you're, you're choosing, you are choosing that. Yeah. So you are choosing it. And you get know, what we tolerate. exactly, exactly. And, you know, the truth is that when you stay, what I find when I talk to people, and I, I actually have personally lived through this, um, whether it's a job or a bad relationship or whatever, you actually like start blaming everybody else. Yeah. Uh, you become victim. You, you like go in the black hole of the suffering mm -hmm. and you start blaming everybody else because it's so much easier just to blame everybody else. Yeah. But you know, when you actually take ownership of your life, um, and you stop drinking the poison, expecting other people to like get sick and you actually like live your life as adult yeah. and be responsible for, you know, every single area of your life, then, you know, that is where your real value and worth starts showing up. Right. People will treat you as how you allow them to treat you. Right. You know, you very much send a message to people of your self-worth and how you want people to treat you. And I don't mean just, you know, a cashier or yeah. a man yeah. or, you know, a san uh, you know, a sanitation man or anything. I mean, I'm talking about every single human being, like my children, um, you know, my, my partner, my friends, my family. Um, and so, you know, it's really important for, to put boundaries in your life and put a value on your life, yeah. of, you know, priceless. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, that's how you want, you want to surround yourself with, you know, people who also have that opinion of themselves and be there and only talk to them as that amazing, valuable human being, you know, to yeah. leave every person more valuable and better than how you found them because yeah. that's what, how I want people to leave me as exactly exactly I think about Dawn I think about when my when my marriage ended um how I had women reaching out to me and saying I wish I had the courage to do something I'm so unhappy I wish I wish I just don't have the I don't have the strength I don't have the courage and I'm so sad by that but I also I also see situations where there are women who are strong enough to, to stand for their own health and their own well-being and their own happiness mm -hmm. that it could potentially, you know, lead away for, for others who might not be. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's really hard. It's, it's not easy. But I think it goes back to what we said before about, you know, not being afraid to be vulnerable because other women need other women's stories to sort of shine a light on their pathway. You're exactly right. And, you know, you, you've you been such a, a strong person in my life. And, you know, like I said before, something I always work on for me, you know, we always have something we're working on. For me, it's being vulnerable with people, you know, just even doing this interview, I'm like, going outside my comfort zone and you um what you do is 
you're vulnerable to me. And so it, it like allows me, it gives me that invitation, like to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So it's just a true gift. And, you know, you right. You just keep passing it forward. So the wow. more I'm vulnerable with my own children, I see them vulnerable with me. And, you know, that's what I want for everyone in my life. Right. I mean, obviously in the workplace, it's a little bit more difficult, you know, yeah. especially for women yeah. um, to, to have that vulnerability because God forbid we show that side. Exactly. But, um, but, you know, I just really appreciate you always creating that space for me. And oh. I, always want to create that space for others. So it's something I'm always trying to, to do for myself as well. Yeah, thanks for saying that. I think about, um, so let's talk a little bit about the workplace because we clearly say fearlessly shattering the glass ceiling, but yet, mm. you know, when I reflect on my 19 years in the pharmaceutical industry, I won't lie, you know, those leaders who really were advocates for me and champions for me and supportive of me were not women. And I remember that very much so. And I think to myself, why, why, why are we as women, why do we need to be so competitive with one another? Why can't we just help each other rise? There's enough, you know, it comes from this idea, there's enough versus there's lack, right? Yeah. Either, either or versus there's enough for all of us. So what are your thoughts around um, this philosophy around like women supporting women? Yeah, I mean, that is a, a, a big subject today, right? I mean, um, yeah. and for me, you know, I've been in positions that at one point was only men, mm -hmm. um, you know, and now there, there are many women in the profession. Um, but as college professor, as, you know, principal, um, you know, I, I did own my own business at one for about 12 years. So, yeah, that I when I would go like shop for my business, it was 99% men surrounding me. And, you know, the truth is, is that when, you know, when a man is in the front of the room, um, you know, and he's saying what's going to happen and this is what you're going to do and this is what it's going to look like and this is what our goals are and all that. There are people in the audience, if, you know, we poll them because um, I do talk to people after, you know, I, we hear things like this and a man is speaking. It's, wow, he's, he's so powerful. Wow. He, he's such an attention getter. He really, he just controls the room when he walks in. And, and yet when I see a woman up there and I ask people, I'll hear, well, she's a mean bitch, you know, and it's, it's really, um, it's so sad. Yeah. It really is just, it just makes me incredibly sad when I hear people, especially women yes. about other women. I mean, my gosh, we've come so far, ladies. I know. Uh, we have so much further to go. I mean, we are half the population and still women still face barriers in the workplace. They still do. I mean, and the truth is, is that women can change their own success. They really do. They have the power to do this. So, you know, by uncovering what you really want, what is your definition of a success? Because my definition of a success may be different from yours, Michelle, or, or anybody else's. So, you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Like everyone has to really take self inventory yeah. of what's best for you and live your own path in your own life and setting goals, you know, to break that glass ceiling. What yeah. are your goals. Well, my goals may be different. Maybe being a principal isn't a big enough goal for another another woman, but right. that's like great for me. Right. Um, and some women, their goal is to be a mom and right. that's an awesome goal. Yeah. You know, I mean, so really just not being judgmental, but loving everyone for like whatever they want and whatever they see is theirs. But what I really find is that I find women in the workplace um, and, you know, I'm in education. I've been in education for, for 33 years. And what I see is that women don't want to promote other women. I know. And I'll say, you know, on the sly, like, like why? She's awesome. Yeah. Well, forget it. Let me tell you something. In three years, she'll be in my job. So I'm not hiring her. Oh, wow. You know, they're intimidated. Yeah. So women are not promoting other women. Yeah. Um, which, you know, is just, 
That screams insecurity for me, though. What you just said. It's exactly right, which is why you have to surround yourself yes. with strong women and strong yeah. co-workers. And, you know, I truly believe, you know, what you, what is in your head is going to come out of your mouth. And what's yeah. going to come out of your mouth is going to become your actions. And your actions are going to become your life. So, you know, you want to always have positive thoughts and surround yourself with people who have positive thoughts. And that may be ending a relationship. That may be leaving a job. Yeah. Right. So I, I recently just retired from being principal and I'm in a great place right now, surrounded by people who only want to lift me up and make me a better person. Right. And so I'm not afraid of leaving and starting a new or finding something new just to make sure I do that. It's very, very important to be in the environment that you are completely supported and not worried about, you know, oh, they're talking about you, you know, behind closed doors over there. Right. You don't even want to have that thought ever enter your mind. It's yeah. it's just your ridiculousness. So, yeah. so men as leaders and women as leaders, uh, it's to me, it's just a, a pure, it's a mindset. So, you know, a set mindset or a growth mindset. Yeah. So I really only surround myself with people who have, you know, a huge growth mindset. I love with, it. With people like you. Yeah, thank you. I I also know, and for the audience, you're a proud mama, and oh. you have two beautiful girls. Not to diminish your boys, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but I guess like as a as a female leader, as a strong female leader, that's how I see you. Thank you. You're in school, right? So, what's your advice? What do you What are you giving them in terms of like? Get, let's get a sneak peek into the wisdom you bestow on your beautiful daughters. Oh gosh. Well, I'll tell you, there's no book to read. So <laughs> <laughs> you learn by your mistakes, but I do. I have boys and two girls and they're, they're adults now. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's a different conversation, but you know, brave parenting is sometimes, uh, you know, you, you really have to take the path of love and not fear and not worry about them, you know, being angry with you, but like saying something because truly, you know, you love them. Um, and, you know, you want, you don't want to worry about the culture and how it should be or what it should look like, but actually like, what are your specific children, children's needs and wants and desires and goals? And so that's different for every single one of my four children. They are completely different from each other, mm -hmm. how they believe, what their goals are. And it's my job as mom to really listen for what is important for them and supporting that with whatever that looks like. Whether I believe it or not, whether I agree with it or not, um, obviously, you know, they're not getting hurt by something, you know, physically hurt. Yeah. However, you know, we, um, you know, we want to be there for our kids, like as a safety net, but to really that to grow into their own person and mostly that they are enough. Yeah. They are enough exactly how they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that wonderful program that you created, you know, you're perfect just the way you are and that they get that, you know, parents who I find, and believe me, I've, I've been there a few times, I've caught myself, but, you know, when we try and control our kids, yeah, you know, those helicopter parents, you know, we see, or now they have a new word like lawnmower parents, but, you know, control is not love. It's really not. It's actually the opposite. And mm -hmm. it's when we like, when, when we let the control go, the trust grows and the love grows. So in the trusting and in the loving, that's where the relationship grows. That's where the support is shown. So yes, you know, some people may have the ideal of, you know, oh, well, you're going to be a lawyer. You're going to be a doctor. You're going to be this. Yeah. You're going to take over the family business or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You actually let go of the control and actually go with the curve instead of against the curve, meaning go with their listening and yeah. what saying and support it yeah. whether they whether you agree with you know them wanting to go live in uh you know Nicaragua and 
build a school or whatever it is. Yeah. It's loving and supporting them, whatever that looks like, because they're their own human being. Like, yeah. you know, so, um, you know, but really mostly is that I feel like some parents, and again, I've been guilty of this, so I, I'm calling myself out. But to raise your children that you are enough, it is enough. Not that it always has to be the best or you have to be the best. Yeah. But you have to be your best, whatever that looks like. Wake yeah. up each day and be your best. And sometimes, especially during COVID, sometimes your best was just getting out of that bed. Yeah. You know, for, for a teenager. Um, you know, where sometimes someone else's best is, you know, acing a math test or getting into a college or landing a wonderful job. So just really just being there and taking your own thoughts of how it should look like or anything out of the equation. Yeah. They are their own human being. You want them to do that. You want them to have that confidence to like fly out of the nest and wave and say like, Thanks, mom. Like, yeah. I got it. Yeah. Like, I got this backpack on my back that you have filled with all these tools, and I am, I'm ready to take on this world. It's amazing. Good. Good advice. Good advice coming not only from a mother, but from a principal and educator, someone who's around kids all day long for years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Each day is different, right? It's, I'm always learning, always, always learning new for sure. I'm always learning from others as well. Mm -hmm. So, Dawn, you know, I could talk to you all day long, very easily, easily. You're very easy to talk to and you're a wealth of knowledge. But um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up soon. So do you have any final words of advice for women out there? I mean, we have a comment here from someone who I don't know if you can see the comment. Um, she's, saying, she's saying that she's living through um, some of this transition and change that we were talking about before. And that it's a struggle. Um, so, I mean, women, right? You know, right there, are commenting. So, like, any any other words of wisdom or thoughts you want to share? Gosh, I mean, first of all, I'm just thrilled to have been here to even speak to you. But you know, something I was told over and over and over again growing up um, actually came from a man, <laughs> um, my dad. And um, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a mom and a dad alive still today. And, but something when I was younger, um, you know, my dad, he's very street smart, not, not so much book smart. Um, and he, he would always give us these, like, we always we used to call them like dadisms, you know, these like all these <laughs> sayings he'd make us say. And um, he always used to say like, you know, Dawn, the answer to life should always be yes. You know, like just this is the only life you have. And to to take it, take the risks, you know, live big and not worry about the failures to be on the court of your life. You know, so many people live their lives on in the stands watching the game. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is it. And, you know, for me, I want 48 amazing years left. Yeah. And I still have 100% of my life to live. Yeah. And I wake up every day knowing that, you know, I want to embrace it and embrace my failures. And, you know, sometimes whether you're just waking up and you don't know if it's going to have a, you, you didn't have a great day or, you're not looking forward to something that's going to happen today. You have to give yourself that pep talk, pep talk. Yeah. And you also at other times have to say to yourself, like, look, you're a badass. Okay. You may be sad this very moment. You're not going to always be sad. Just yeah. hang in there and you do great. You know, like you really have to give yourself those pep talks, but really for me, if I could leave anyone with everything, you know, say yes. Yeah say yes to life and you know grab it by the horns live it by the fullest and just you know a friday at 4 39 p.m right mm -hmm. now just be friday at 4 39 p.m i mean yeah. there's nothing else i'd rather be doing right now than talking to you and anybody else that's listening 
to just live your life and surround yourself with people who love you at all times. I love it. I'm truly a blessed person and I'm, I'm so grateful to have been here today. I have nothing to add because that was amazing and I appreciate you. And I think it's, I think it's great advice. I think all oftentimes we don't, we don't do that. And I think it's a great reminder that we have one shot, one life. We got to go for it. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Don't worry about messing up for sure. Just keep, keep going for it. Love it. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you so Thank much for joining so me. Much. Thank you so much. I'm so honored. Thank you. I'm really grateful. Thank you. Have All a right. good weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.